everybody, Chris here from It's Mead Made, and we are back in Kira talking about support settings. And today we are going to be talking about those support settings that I call the base settings. The settings that you change and tweak and need to look at every single time that you have supports on your 3D prints. We've got a lot to cover, so let's just go ahead, jump to the table, and get started. So as we jump into Kira, I went ahead and threw a box in here, and we are going to go ahead and use this as our example for supports. Now the cool thing about Kira is you can turn any 3D model into a support. So if you just click on your object, then you come over here to your per model settings. Right here is print as support. So we click on that, and now we have a support structure. So if you missed the last video, you might be seeing some support settings that you don't see in the videos that I'm going over. Now, if you need to see more settings, this is how you do it. So you go over to your preferences, and then a dialog box will pop up, go into settings, and then this is all of your visible settings. You'll see some that are checked and some that are not. All you have to do is scroll down to your support settings and then check all of the boxes then you can see all of the options that Cura gives you for supports. For these videos, I'm going ahead and checking all of these boxes because we're going to go through a lot of them. But the nice thing is, if there are certain settings that you never change, you don't have to have them displayed, so then it can help remind you of the ones that you need to change and you're not searching through all of these settings. Once you have everything checked, hit close, and then when you go into your support settings, you're going to see everything right here. In our last video, we found our support overhang angle number, and mine was 50 degrees, and I was being very conservative with mine. I might have been able to go up to 60, and every single 3D printer is different, and depending on your settings, this varies. So be sure to check that video out right up here in the top. When you need to add supports, there are some base settings that I look at every single time because these also change per model. Our first one is the support structure right here. There are two different types, normal and tree. Tree actually used to be an experimental, but now it's just right in the support settings. I'm not going to be talking about tree in these videos, but I am going to be talking all about the normal settings. The next setting I always look at is my support placement. There are two options here, touching the build plate and everywhere. And what this means is only supports come off of the build plate. So if you actually need supports in your model, like above, like maybe on the top or in the middle of it, this will not print supports if you have touching build plate. So if there's a hollow void and you need to have it supported on the inside, you need to do everywhere. Over time, you're going to start to realize when you need to select touching build plate only and everywhere. It's good to experiment with small little models and kind of see the different results that you get. But for this, I'm just doing touching build plate because we're just using a box. The next one, support pattern. I do change this one often. You can think of this as your infill of your supports. You can see that all the different options you have. You can use lines, and let's go ahead and slice that so you can see it. When we slice it with lines, you can see that that's literally all it's doing, is just like the infill pattern, lines. Then there is grid, which is exactly what you would think it is, grid, and it is just a grid crosshatch. Triangles is exactly what you think. Concentric is a nice one, and I do swap between this when I've got some weird shapes. And when we slice that, you can see it actually just takes the outside shape and keeps making smaller versions of it inside. The only thing with concentric, I will tell you, you can have a good likelihood of fails depending on what your other settings are. So you gotta be careful. If you're having problems with your adhesion, this could be a bad one for you. Zigzag is another great one. And this one is just like the infill zigzag. And I went over the differences between zigzag and lines in the Cura Settings infill video I did. And I'll go ahead and put the link to that video right up here. This is a really good one that explains all of the different infills. 
And all of the things that I said about the different infills apply to these as well, because they are the exact same. You can think of them as your infill for your supports. Now, the two that I'm not going to lie, I never use is cross, because I feel like cross does not give you enough of a pattern inside. And when you have a big support, you have to think, you have some big areas here that are not going to have anything to adhere to when you're doing the roof of your support. Then the last one is gyroid. Now this is my favorite infill, but I never use it for the infill of my supports. And the biggest reason is, it is terribly difficult to remove sometimes. Some of these other ones, like lines, you can remove your supports really easily. But gyroid is a very strong infill, and for supports, we don't want super strong infills because we need to remove them. So this is one that I actually never use, just like cross. So I've switched back to the lines support pattern. And another important thing to understand is your connect support lines. This one is a great little setting, and I use this often. What it does is it will actually connect all of your support infill lines. This will help with your flow to prevent your under extrusion, and it will also make your support structure a lot more sturdy. So when we click it and then slice it again, if we zoom in here, you can see that now it doesn't just stop. It actually continues. And then if you come down here, you see it zigzags. This is a lot like zigzag, but even with zigzag, it will stop the flow and reset depending on the shape of your structure. This won't. So I use lines quite a bit with connect support lines. This is a really good addition to your support settings to be able to have them a lot more sturdy. So while we're on our support pattern, the last thing you need to look at is your support density. Now this is something I change on almost every single print that has supports. Now you're probably wondering, why don't you just set it to a good number and leave it like that? It really depends on what your supports are doing. So if you have very small supports, you're going to need to crank this up a bit. Now this is a pretty big model right here, this block, and I have it set to 5%. If you have really big supports, a low number is perfectly fine. But let's look at this. Let me scale this block down. So imagine if my support is very small, and if I slice that, we can see there's not much of an infill. There's one line here and one line here and you might need a really good roof on your support. So you're going to increase that. So if I can increase this to say 15%, now I actually have a good amount of lines on here to be able to build that roof of my support. Now, depending on how big your supports are, you definitely want to slice your model and go down through it to see if your support density is dense enough. Because if it's not, it might fail, or you might not get a good enough roof built on top of this infill to be able to support the model you're wanting to print. Now the last base setting I look at every single time I print supports is your support wall line count. And this is exactly what it sounds like. It's your outside wall and how many lines you're going to have for that. So if I say five and then I slice it, you can see that this is going to be a very dense support. And Cura is even telling me, hey, you're kind of uh, out of the parameters that you should be in. That's the beautiful thing about Cura. Every single time you do something that is out of a parameter, it will highlight orange for you. But if I bring it back down to two lines, it will actually build it as a nice thick wall and it will give more structure and stability to your supports. Now you're probably wondering why you would want your support wall line count to be more than one. And I will give you this perfect example that almost anybody can understand. So let's say I have this tiny support that is just going all the way up and touching something that might have an overhang. This is the, your opportunity to say, I'm going to have my supports say have three lines. And doing that will create a solid structure. This is very nice when they're very small. You could keep looking at it too and say, well, for this size, I could scale it down to two. And that would also be very nice and sturdy because we've all had 
supports that do this exact thing and they just break off. And it is so frustrating when you're close to the end of your print and then one part of your print is failed because of that support did not hold on. And I only change that setting when I have small supports like that little column. But when they're big like this, I don't change it. I leave it on one. One thing I will tell you about your support wall line count, the more lines you have, the harder your prints are going to be to remove because you don't want this like your regular print and have it really thick lines because then you're going to have to just break this off with pliers or melt it off or honestly, I have no idea how you're going to break some of these off if they're at five because even my models, I only print at a four line count. We covered so much in this video. I wanna make sure that all of you understand every single concept covered here because these are the important things that you need to be looking at every single time that you have supports in your print. If you have further questions or if I didn't even go deep enough and explain something, let me know in the comments. Even though we covered so much in this video, we're still not done talking about supports. Now we need to talk about how can we get the best bed adhesion for our supports so they don't fall over. And that, you guessed it, is gonna be in the next video. And I'll see you there.